In the last season, we saw how this dishbag Jackson betrayed his friend and wife for Lane's scissors. The girls are enraged at the sight of Jackson, whom they thought had been lost for years, as he passionately makes out with Lane in their presence. It suddenly comes to Lane's attention that Alex is trying to break free, so she drags Jackson away while leaving the guards to restrain her. Meanwhile, Lane's guard tries to attach a pumping device to Bobby, but Bobby kicks them off before running out. He runs into the girls, who search frantically for an exit, and follows them behind a closed door. They find out that they're locked in a cold storage room, but Alex points their attention to the fact that they're not just in any cold storage room, they are locked in a literal sperm bank. An idea kicks into their mind, and Bobby and the girls step out while taking the sperm bottles as hostages. The guards are unable to attack them since they don't want to lose their precious white gold, so they move back while Bobby and the gang step forward. Just then, a man who was getting his nuts extracted sees Bobby passing by and begs for help. Bobby kicks a piece of glass in his direction but continues pushing forward with the girls. Unfortunately, they find out that they can't move forward any longer since the way ahead is leading to a staircase. While they contemplate the best way forward, the milking man that Bobby had helped out earlier suddenly pushes past them. The guards are momentarily confused, and Bobby and the girls take advantage of this moment to escape. They run into the half-naked man from earlier, who introduces himself as Daniel. The girls join in, and they introduce themselves briefly before running down the hallway while following Daniel, who claims to know the way around. Suddenly, Bobby spots two men in a room and tries to help them escape, but Daniel warns him that they're the good boys and they won't listen to him. Bobby insists that he would leave no man behind and uses his body as a battering ram, but he's surprised when the good boys walk over and reveal that the door was open all along. They inform him that they have no interest in leaving because the outside world is full of sickness and death, and they enjoy staying here, eating jelly and getting pumped. However, when Bobby persists, they send a message by pushing him to the floor and alerting security that there are intruders in the good boy's room. Bobby picks himself up and chases after the rest of the gang. They stop at a garage, which Daniel reveals is the only way out. However, they're unable to find the remote that opens the garage door, so Pip climbs a ladder to fix it. Unfortunately for them, the guards arrive at their location at the same time that Pip manages to open it. She holds it in place until the others manage to go out. Pip is grabbed by the guards right when she's trying to escape, but she apologizes to Jamie before she's kidnapped. While Bobby drives them toward the northern checkpoint, Daniel reveals that the sperm-producing factory that they had just rescued him from is not the real safe place but there is another safe place. He also tells them of how he and one of the good boys came from that place but the other guy had eaten way too much jelly that he had just snapped. Alex calls Bobby's attention to the fact that there is a checkpoint ahead, but Bobby says that there is no way he is going back to the hellhole they just left and switches places with Jamie. Jamie is stopped by a female guard who asks them for their business, but Jamie gets nervous, leading the guard to suspect them of something amiss. Meanwhile, Bobby and Daniel, who were hiding in the trunk, Discover that Jackson had sneaked in after them, Bobby asks Jackson what he was doing, but he explains that he was also trying to escape, which leads to a fight between him and Bobby. Just then, the female guard threatens to press a button that would allow giant spikes to come out of the floor and also alert Lane and other security guards. Suddenly, Alex sneaks out of the car and attacks her from the back. She tries to fight her off, only to fall unconscious after falling on her face. Meanwhile, Jackson runs out of the trunk, and Bobby and Daniel chase after him. Bobby manages to tackle Jackson and pin him to the ground before delivering a series of punches to his face. After they tie Jackson up and question him, he reveals that Lane had manipulated him with her charms but now he is totally on their side. However, Bobby believes he's a lying fish who deserves to be hanged. Bobby tells Alex that Jackson was probably trying to find a safe place just so he could turn the other guys in, and they had little time before the guards caught up to them. He is supported by Daniel, who reveals that there's no way he's taking a backstabber to the safe place, but Alex appeals to Jamie to talk some sense into the guys. Meanwhile, Bobby hangs Jackson with a rope and ties it to the car, but Jamie initially turns a deaf ear to her pleas since she is full of anger about what happened. Just before Jackson takes his last breath, she steps out and cuts the rope. Jamie reveals that if anyone were to kill Jackson, it would be her. Meanwhile, Jackson spots the remote control that the officer had mentioned earlier and starts pressing it. However, it transpires that Jamie intentionally dropped the remote control to test Jackson's loyalty, and she had already removed the battery from it. She then stabs his leg with a knife to prevent him from escaping. She also suggests that they go to the safe place with Jackson despite Daniel's protests. On the other hand, 
Pip is constantly being tortured by Lane and Dr. Garvey using the shockwave machine to reveal her friend's whereabouts. Pip herself doesn't know their whereabouts, but to postpone the suffering, she lies that she can take them to her friends. While this occurs, Alex and her gang make their way down to the safe place, keeping Jackson blindfolded. They eventually arrive at the safe place where they meet some ladies whom they know as the Resistance. The ladies greet Daniel with unfamiliar emotion in their eyes, and Alex asks if they have worked with Tilda, her mother. The leader of the Resistance informs Alex that Tilda will always be one of them. Jamie asks why they were only seeing a handful of people when they had expected to see men running around in hordes. After all, this was supposed to be a safe place for them. The leader asks the other members of the Resistance to get the men and proceeds to inspect Jackson. The Resistance is excited to meet him, even though Bobby informs them that he's a lying and manipulative thought. Just then, a man named Sean arrives and introduces himself to them. He informs them that he has just been making a toothbrush, and they're all stunned to see that there is only one man in the safe place. Jamie tries to inform the Resistance about Lane's hideout where she milks men for breakfast, but the leader simply ignores her and suggests that they spree. However, Bobby asks why there was only one man when Daniel had told him that there were eight of them, but the Resistance reveals that they chose to leave and never returned. Meanwhile, a bowl with a strange drink is being passed around, and they're all asked to take a sip since it's part of their custom. Daniel is skeptical about it, so he fakes drinking and tells Jamie to do the same. Jamie also fakes drinking and is about to tell Alex to do the same, only to find that Alex has already downed a large portion of the drink. Jamie tells the Resistance that they can help them with saving the other men that Lane had captured, but they refuse because they have voted against using tranquilizer guns. Jamie is so angered by this that she asks why they would vote against using a harmless weapon, but Alex outrightly tells them that they're not the Resistance, they're a bunch of pussies. This earns her meowing sounds from the Resistance, but Alex suddenly realizes that her vision is getting blurry and she's imagining things. The same thing happens to the others, and we soon discover that the drink was some weird type of drug they used to get high. Meanwhile, Pip tries to buy her friends some time by leading Michelle to the wrong location, as she herself doesn't know where her friends actually are. Meanwhile, Jackson develops a fever, and Jamie rushes him into a tent. There, Jackson fights Jamie for his bag, but it ends up being thrown across the room. He crawls toward it and finally calms down after taking some pills from it. Jamie gets emotional after realizing that the drugs were probably what Lane had used to turn Jackson against her. Meanwhile, Sean asks Bobby to join him in making walkie-talkies, and Jackson follows along since he doesn't have a better option. While this occurs, Alex sees her mother's spirit walking into one of the tents and follows after her. In the tent, Alex watches her mother's spirit as she writes notes and hums to herself before leading Alex to a location where she had kept her journal. Alex is excited to see this as she realizes that her mother was trying to pass a message across. While Sean and Bobby play pretend on their walkie-talkies, Bobby manages to get Sean to tell him the truth about the missing man. Sean informs him that after eight years of living peacefully in the bush, the other men finally decided to have fun by playing war games. They took the tranquilizer guns and went into the sea, but they ended up shooting each other and drowning in the ocean's currents. Sean tearfully reveals that he wasn't with them at the time because he was trying to win by building a rifle that could automatically load a new magazine on its own. Bobby is moved to tears by this, but he consoles Sean by saying that at least he's good at making stuff. Alex walks in at that moment and asks Bobby and Sean to show her their tooth. For a moment, they assume she's gone bonkers, but Alex explains that she might have found the reason why they survived the pandemic from her mom's notebook. While this happens, Jackson learns that Jamie is pregnant and tries to remind her of how happy they had been when their son was alive. Jamie accuses Jackson of using their son as an excuse to be a sadistic junkie, but Jackson tells her that he had used the pills to fill up the large hole that had been left after they lost their son. He also accuses her of sleeping with Bobby to get another son that would replace their lost son, which earns him a slap from Jamie. Jamie tearfully accuses Jackson of being a tricky twat who had allowed her to leave her best friend behind but he claims that he can lead her to Lane's secret lair. Jamie doesn't trust Jackson, but he informs her that she can always kill him with her knife if he tries to escape. Meanwhile, Alex is seen inspecting Daniel's teeth. She cheerfully reveals that she might have found the secret to surviving the pandemic, and she would have to visit Lane's facility to confirm it. Jamie arrives at that moment and suggests that they follow Jackson's secret route, but Bobby asks why they should trust him. Jamie reminds them of her promise to personally end his life and the group follows Jackson as they head towards Lane's lair. Alex and the others arrive at the secret tunnel, but they're surprised when they run into wellness guards who surround Pip and Michelle. They easily put them out with their new rifles, 
after which Bobby turns his attention to Jackson, whom he accuses of reporting them to Lane. Jamie and Alex take Jackson's side as they reveal that they had monitored him throughout the way, so there was no way he could have told her. Michelle informs them that if they were done, she would go back to making jelly for Lane, but Pip insists on knowing the place where she was making the jellies. Bobby asks how this is even relevant, but Pip reminds them that Lane is a vegetarian, and since jellies are an animal byproduct, the jelly wasn't meant for Lane, rather, it was meant for the good boys. After that, the group decides to head to Michelle's house, where she makes jellies. At Michelle's place, they find random objects lying around, which Michelle complains aren't hers. They ask Jackson to draw a plan of the building where Lane is hiding and ask Michelle to confirm if the building plan is accurate. After Michelle does so, they spend the rest of the day having fun and smoothing out their plan. Later on, Jackson sees Alex staring at an old picture of them she had found in her mother's notebook. Jackson asks her about their mother's health, and Alex is stunned as she realizes that Jackson doesn't know the truth about their mother's health. She informs him that her mother's brain had been permed on Lane's order, shaking Jackson by this revelation since Lane had promised him that she would take care of his mother. Alex shows him the hole that they drilled into her brain in hopes of subjecting her to the same fate, but she reveals that they had managed to escape. Jackson suggests that they visit their mom, who Alex considers to be brain dead, but she decides to follow her brother's advice anyway. When they arrive at Tilda's place, they find her watching a wellness program on TV. Jackson tries to get her to talk, but Tilda doesn't say anything that can help out. Jackson breaks down in tears and hugs his mother before apologizing for what she had gone through. The next day, Alex and the gang follow the secret tunnels that Jackson told them about. They eventually reach a secret door that leads to Lane's hideout. Inside the house, Michelle presses a strange thing, causing the alarm to go off, but she claims that it's just a humidifier. Jamie gets a strange feeling that something is not right, so she walks back to the door they had walked in from, only to discover that it had been locked. Alex and Jackson, who had followed Jamie to ensure she was safe, are stunned at this, but Jamie harbors secret fears that Jackson had led them into a trap. Meanwhile, Bobby, Pip, and Michelle arrive at another place only to discover that it is Lane's creepy ballroom with male figurines and sensual music. Meanwhile, Jamie excuses herself to puke, but she notices a picture of Lane sporting a round stomach. She is filled with hatred as she recalls how she had made out with Jackson. Jamie angrily tries to pull out the painting, only to discover that it leads to a secret room. Despite Jackson's attempts to stop her, she enters the room. Later, she discovers that this is the matrimonial room that Jackson had shared with Lane. Meanwhile, Bobby, Pip, and Michelle discover the good boys who refuse to let Bobby rescue them. The two jelly buds eventually explode themselves while Bobby covers the two women from the damage. On the other side, Jealous Lane suddenly emerges from the bathroom with a gun and asks Jackson if he loves her or Jamie. Jackson lies that he obviously loves her, so Lane asks him to show it. Reluctantly, Jackson kisses Lane in front of Jamie, so that Jamie can escape. However, in a cruel twist of fate, Lane shoots Jackson in the stomach, and he crumbles to a heap on the floor while Jamie rushes over to his side and bursts into tears. Alex steps in with Constance and some guards at that moment, and she screams at Constance about how her brother was just unjustly killed. But Lane, being the slippery snake that she is, has already harmed herself and is now lying to Constance that she had been attacked by Jamie and Jackson. Constance appears confused but eventually carries Lane to safety while Alex continues to grieve for her brother. After Jackson's death, the group prepares for another journey despite being unsure of what to do next. In the creamery team bus, Pip tells the group that they must bring Lane to justice for her sins. With Maintenance Monday approaching a government house, Pip recognizes it as a chance to confront the Prime Minister and expose Lane's misdeeds to the public. Michelle and Bobby quickly align with Pip's plan. Later on, Bobby tries to talk to Alex, who is trying to understand her mom's diary. Bobby tells her about Jackson and his feelings towards him. He suddenly sees her mother's code in her notebook and informs her that they will need a military grid map to understand it. Alex reveals that government records would probably hold what they need. When they get to the main city, Pip wakes everyone up. Michelle and Pip are stopped at the entrance by a woman claiming to be the executive receptionist, who tells them they need an appointment to meet with the prime minister. However, Pip in a heated tone asserts that they're Hero Valley Council committee members and they are here to protest wellness's human rights abuses. Carla claims to be the Prime Minister's special counsel and assures them that the Prime Minister always cares about human rights. Pip rehearses her speech for the Prime Minister and suddenly hears her voice behind a closed door. They rush in and urge the Prime Minister that they have something urgent to discuss. 
The Prime Minister invites them to her office and provides them with support bunnies. Pip reveals to her that there are male survivors in this world and presents Bobby as a proof that Lane has been detaining male survivors and harvesting sperm. The Prime Minister is astonished to find out that a man is still in existence. They later have a drink with the Prime Minister, who checks Bobby out. During their conversation, the Prime Minister inquires if he has considered his role in society. Bobby suspects the Prime Minister has ulterior motives. The Prime Minister suggests Bobby share his story with the press but in exchange, he would have to show his skills to save their species from extinction. Bobby is confused on what to do, and needs time to think about it. Carla sets up a safe place for them to stay and reveals they are investigating wellness events. Bobby eventually agrees to sacrifice his nuts to expose wellness at a press conference. Carla is afraid of how people will react if they learn a man survived the virus, but the Prime Minister tells her to call a press conference immediately. In the press conference, people learn about Alex, Jamie, and Pip from the Prime Minister. Jamie suddenly spots Dr. Garvey's reflection outside the window but doesn't pay much attention to it. After explaining everything, the Prime Minister introduces Bobby to the public. As Bobby proceeds to the stage, a gunshot knocks down the Prime Minister. Bobby raises his gun in shock, which makes everyone think that Bobby shot her. The crowd goes mad, so Bobby threatens to shoot everyone before fleeing. The girls chase him and Jamie tells them Bobby has been set up as they descend the stairs. The girls ride bikes outside the main building to find Bobby. Bobby is running in a wrapper as Pip cycles up to him and asks him to jump in her basket. Not wanting to be used as a milk machine by women, Bobby immediately jumps in her basket. The bicycle is too weak to support two people, so Pip can't cycle fast. They miss Alex and Jamie in a sharp turn. Bobby survives flying through the lane without hitting his head. Luckily, they hide in a warehouse from Lane's guards. In the warehouse, Jamie tells the others of how she had seen Dr. Garvey talking to Carla, which reveals that Carla also works for wellness. Just then, a mercenary steps out and asks if they are on the run from the government. She tells them about several people who had escaped, mentioning one with a bounty of $10,000 gold placed on him, which was stingy considering how many billions the guy would make in his lifetime if he was milked for an hour a day. The mercenary promises to take them to a place where they can avoid wellness guards in exchange for Bobby's medals. The girls agree because they don't have any better options. The captain takes them into the secret network of tunnels under the city, which is cut off from the outside world, and where the people from the dark web leave. The group is shocked to see men and women living here normally. The captain reveals that a lot of them here don't even know about the pandemic, as they never come out from their hole. She leads them upstairs and asks them not to talk. She excuses herself, but Alex tends to something, and the others follow her. It turns out that Alex and Bobby try to find a location indicated in Tilda's diary through a military grid map. They figure out the location and agree to go there, even though the coordinates lead to a spot too small to appear on a map. Alex then asks the captain how much she would charge to take her to the map location. The captain refuses, stating that Alex cannot afford her services, especially after revealing that Bobby's medals are worthless. Just then, to everyone's surprise, Lane appears on television and announces that the traitors who killed the Prime Minister will be punished and increases Bobby's bounty to 100,000 credits. Since Bobby is with the girls, the captain offers to take them anywhere on the map. Jamie realizes her hints and tells her she no longer wants to work with her, but the captain tells the girls they can have an easy deal with them or with her gang. Pip realizes they would easily whoop their asses in battle and offers the captain a counteroffer. The captain wonders what could be worth over $100,000 in gold, but she agrees to the deal and tells them she will drop Bobby off at Lane's headquarters and collect the bounty if they don't return within 24 hours. Later, the girls break into a lab and are left surprised to see the world's sperm bank half as small, wondering where all the containers went. Just then, a doctor enters and immediately calls the guards. The girls are surrounded and captured by the guards before being locked in a transparent room. Alex pees in the same room, irritating Pip. To irritate her even more, Alex refuses to pull up her pants, so Pip walks over to her and drags her pants up while using Alex's face to wipe the window. Jamie tries to separate them but gets caught in their fight. They're eventually disentangled by the security guards who rush to their rescue immediately. However, a doctor arrives and instructs the guards to release the girls by Lane's orders. Following that, Constance leads them to Lane, who takes Jamie to a different room. There, she opens up a bottle of her finest champagne and asks Jamie to join her. She reveals that Jamie's blood test reports show that she is pregnant with a boy, just like Lane. 
She gives Jamie an offer, if she agrees to give up her child to Lane to raise, she will release her friend, and after that, Lane will provide Jamie with sperm so she can have as many daughters as she wants. In reality, Lane wants to be the only woman in the world who can birth a boy, so she can use him to gain political support. After thinking for a few seconds, Jamie declines her offer, so Lane stabs her multiple times with a knife. Jamie slides to the floor, her nails digging into Lane's skin. Constance enters and sees blood on Lane's white dress, assuming Jamie did something terrible, but Jamie opens her shirt to reveal her fake blood-covered chest. She reveals that Lane tried to kill her, leaving Constance confused. Constance points the gun at them, but Alex approaches her and explains how they reached Lane, revealing that they committed the worst crime they could to get her attention. They anticipated that Lane would attempt to kill Jamie, but they were prepared this time, as Jamie had sedatives in her fingernails, which she used to scratch Lane. Alex also informs Constance that they had promised to deliver Lane to the captain in exchange for Bobby, but she swears to protect Lane. Alex asks Constance to give them 15 minutes to escape before kissing her on the lips. Michelle is shocked to learn they were lovers, after which they hide Lane in a gigantic cake before making their way out of the building. The captain, who was about to drop off Bobby at the women's kingdom, sees the girls carrying a huge cake into a stowaway car and realizes it could only mean one thing, so she celebrates with Bobby. In the next scene, Lane is surprised when she wakes up and finds herself on the ocean. She screams aloud, and the captain asks the group to inform her that they have just crossed international waters. Lane realizes that now she can do nothing, the girls take turns keeping an eye on her, and when it's Jamie's turn, Lane hits Jamie's insecurity and starts telling her how Lane was always the first choice for Jackson and she will soon be the mother to his son. This shit talk enrages Jamie, who pushes her off the ship. Lane screams as she falls against the water current while Alex runs out and views the sight in horror. She asks Jamie what she has done, but Jamie stares at her defiantly. The season ends as Dr. Harvey gets on a helicopter while making plans to secure her embryo. See you in the next video, till then take care and goodbye.